Is calling somebody privileged because they are white, judging by the color of their skin? You let me know. In some way, it sounds like it is. But in today's discussions, people open up about this phenomenal question asked by a palm color man. And I know that you've come across his videos because I know I have flooding my For You page on TikTok. He usually sits at the restaurant eating some expensive food. It seems expensive. I guess it is expensive. But since he's a palm color man, I guess he can afford it. And he asks these questions about race and everything. They are thought provocative, but some are biased. Now, when I say that they can afford it because he's a palm color man, I don't mean that there are no black people out there who dine at luxurious restaurants or who eat expensive foods. They are there. But a lot of palm colors, most palm colors, all palm colors are privileged that way. Okay, a lot of palm colors might say that I'm beginning to sound art to the cyst. So let me just play you his video and some of the reactions that it sparked. And we're going to have this discussion. You know, calling someone privileged because they're white is judging someone by the color of their skin. It's not. It's a fact. It is a fact. I'm stitching this again because a bunch of you absolutely missed the freaking mark. Okay, so let me clear some stuff up. First of all, I'm not white. I'm Mexican-American. If you don't believe me, this is literally a picture of me with my dad. And here's a picture of me in a sombrero when I was living in Mexico. Aren't I cute? Anyway, redlining doesn't exist, but that doesn't stop people from going into already impoverished, mostly black neighborhoods and buying up properties to let them run down in order to lower the cost. And when property is down in your costs, that also defines how well your schools are funded. It's reasons like places in, I believe, Germany or whatever, um, they don't have like private schools. It's because the people who are rich have to share the same school with the people who are poor and rich people don't want their rich kids going to a poor school. White privilege exists in higher education as well in the United States because, well, legacies. When higher education institutes first started opening in America, people of color were not allowed to go there. Therefore, they weren't allowed to establish a legacy like the white people who first went there were allowed to do. It's only in recent decades, really, that people of color are allowed to enter and ed get educated at these institutes. In 2001, the CDC reported that black women have a higher mortality rate by 2.6 times when compared to white women. That is roughly 70 deaths to 100,000 births. And that is regardless of education or income. It's also due to the fact that most like medical textbooks and journals have illustrations predominantly of white people and they don't show illustrations of things like rashes or cancers that might show up differently on a darker person's skin color. And it wasn't until recently that, well, they started adding these to the medical journals because people were dying. And the National Registry of like Public Exonerations or whatever concluded in 2001 that despite only being roughly 13% of the population, black men specifically made up nearly half of all uh, convictions that were overturned. So they were basically exonerated. They were falsely convicted at a very clearly higher rate than white individuals. So white privilege also exists in the courtroom and in custody battles, etc. And those crimes for convictions against black people, those false convictions, they go up if the crime is violent. And let's not forget white privilege exists in the media. Because how are we going to forget how the media treated Michelle Obama for having a sleeveless dress, yet praising Donald Trump's wife, Melania, who was a literal porn star, as a vision of womanhood and beauty? There's nothing wrong with that, but the comparison is a little suspicious, don't you think? People who try to make this white privilege is racism argument they just do so to invalidate actual racism. 
Being privileged isn't an attribute of one's character. It's a classification amongst different races in a society based on how people are treated. If you don't understand systemic racism, you're not realizing your privilege. On average, a white family in America will make $75,000 a year. For blacks, it's 48. So there's no judgment there, it's just facts. And if you go down the list, you will see that whites are better off than minorities in almost every category. So maybe this will help. How much equity and inheritance do you stand to inherit? It doesn't matter that you don't have racist tweets. It doesn't matter that you didn't vote for Trump in 2016. If you are a white person in America, you were groomed to be a racist. You were groomed to uphold the system of white supremacy. You are a racist until you actively make the decision to work against that. You will hold racist ideologies until you actively work to deconstruct that. In America, racism is the passive action. Being anti-racist is the action. From our childhood, we are taught that our whiteness is intrinsically linked with our personhood and self-worth. That is part of the reason why many white people, when they are first called out on their racism, have such a knee-jerk reaction to the word racist as opposed to the action of them being racist. Because calling them out on their racism is calling them out on their whiteness. And we have had it hammered into our head that our whiteness is one of the most important parts of our identity. Let me be clear, that's all wrong, harmful, and is being taught to us because they are grooming us to uphold the systems of white supremacy. But you are not automatically not racist, and you are certainly not anti-racist, just because you don't have wildly racist weed, just because you don't have a horrendous digital footprint. Things like Brooks tweets are outright aggression, but your microaggressions have also always been aggressions. As white people, we are groomed to be racists. And I really don't think it's appropriate that other people are using the race actions of Brooks Gofield to put themselves on a pedestal to say, well, I've never been like that, so I've never been racist. I guarantee you have. You have been trained to be racist. You and your whiteness are being weaponized. And if you really feel that comfortable in stating that you were never racist, that you've never been racist, I implore you to sit down and actually introspect. Because you may not have made the choice to be a racist, but the system made a choice to weaponize you and your race. And racism is the passive action. If you're not actively choosing to be anti-racist, you are being racist. Hey, it's Finn. Sucks, doesn't it? Just so you know, pointing out a factual statement, that a judgment does not make. For example, this guy is blue, fact. This guy is too blue, judgment. Grass is green, fact. Grass is too long, judgment. Fuck mug bath. Hey everybody, calling out white privilege is not a judgment, it's an observation. There are things that white people don't have to worry about that people of color do. That's what privilege is referring to. White privilege doesn't mean that you're automatically rich, that your life is easy. It means that your race is not one of the things contributing to the difficulty you experience in your life. People of color have a different experience. And they're all different kinds of privilege. It's just the way that a society works and it's an observation about the challenges that certain people face and the certain challenges that they don't. I have male privilege, I have fit privilege, and I have white privilege. My life hasn't been easy, but my race certainly hasn't contributed to making it more difficult. Their skin. Hey yo! You need to send that to the people in the back screaming loud! Shout it from the rooftops! Because... What's all this, this hatred towards the people of the lighter skin complexion? Because as a 50% white man myself, I don't like it. I don't like that they, that they hate towards the, the white folks in this country. See, Dr. Martin Luther King didn't do all that marching and all the protesting and all that to only have racism just scoot, hit that reverse button. He ain't do that. He said that we're going to judge people by the content of their character, not the color of their skin. That's the world that he believes in. And we ain't there yet. We ain't there yet. Because instead of what was going on in the 60s and 70s, and actually pretty much most of American history, uh, is now, screw that reverse, uno reverse card. And now, 
it's towards the, the, the people of the Caucasian skin color. And so, yeah, I don't agree with it. We shouldn't be right towards anybody. We shouldn't hate anybody solely based on the, the, the color of their skin. Honestly, we shouldn't hate anybody for anything. But, yeah, definitely not the color of their skin. I mean, you can't change this. I mean, technically you can, but we're not going to get into that. I, was, I didn't choose to be born brown yet. Are the people going to hate on me because I'm brown? Nah, nah, don't do that. Don't do that. Spread the positivity, not the negativity. Don't be a hater to the haters. Let the haters be your motivators. Remember, Jesus loves you. Have yourselves a great day. If you're a black person and you think that pomegranates are not privileged, look around you. From social media to media representation and to icons, superstars, role models, who are the most famous? Who are the most influential people on the planet that have got a lot of numbers behind them? Or one of the richest people, who are they? It's usually palm colored. It's usually a palm color man wearing a suit who uh, claims to have achieved something because of their hard work. But when you look at it very closely, some of it most of it could be attributed to the entitlement of being a palm color person. Like, to be honest with you, I don't want to sound biased. I don't want to sound like I'm an artist. I don't want to sound like I'm a weak person who's tried hard, but because I'm lazy and all, I haven't achieved anything in life. No. Like, when you think about it, the majority of palm colors who have risen to the top, they are artist as heck. The man who runs Twitter, now known as X, is also an r to the cyst person. We've heard incidences where he spews r to the cyst biases towards his black workers. And people have reported about that. But what has been done? And you know why nothing has been done? Because of his palm color entitlement. But if a black person was involved in doing anything wrong, the judiciary, the justice system, and all these systems that are against black people would have dealt with them. Yes, we have black people who are very rich. Jay-Z is a billionaire. Kanye was a billionaire. Diddy is a multimillionaire. But when you think about most black people that are very rich, like super rich, in the billions or multimillionaire levels, they're usually attached with these unusual things. Just look at Diddy and the incidences that happened Kanye Jay-Z you know they are known for being uh, in relation with their court they are known for amassing their riches in unpure or unholy ways if I may put it right but every palm colored out there every palm colored is clean you know that's the reason why they call it palm colorness even the movies that we watch a lot of powerful superheroes out there are palm colored and there was this pastor I don't know if you've come across this sermon he was talking about how most superheroes out there that we admire as black people are usually palm color people like my favorite superhero is iron man right but he's a palm color man and as much as uh, he's a palm color man he's usually narcissistic he's got this uh behavior that would make you hate him in a way and this pastor also talked about how black heroes are there but they usually get uh, unalived in movies or how they get portrayed as weak a train in the boys like every black superhero movie out there he's biased you would end up hating the character of that superhero even though it's a powerful superhero Bias is everywhere. Palm color entitlement is everywhere. And I don't want to be that guy who talks about movies because I've had such friends and they've bored me before. But did you watch Deadpool and Wolverine? And did you see the time when Blade entered the scene? And in the cinema, people were wild and out, right? That's how much people everywhere uh, admire black heroes. But now that there's a suggestion to feature him in a solo upcoming film, nobody want to do that. Nobody want to invest in that character of Blade. Why? Because it's a black person playing the character. Like, there's a lot of things going on, but I don't want to get into that. And that is the reason why I'm saying that if you are a black person and you don't think that palm colors are privileged, or you don't think that any palm color does risen to the top because of their racial privilege, just look around you. Even the Twitter algorithm, even the YouTube algorithm, even the TikTok algorithm pushes content in this way. There are a lot of people that have complained that a social media platform is not pushing their content be because they've started uh, doing something that is uh, culturally appropriate to their race. Like, just think about it. Even technologies are now recognizing these racial biases. AI, for example, is known for this bias. Oh my goodness. Even technology is segregating against black people. Facial recognition. We discussed this in another video. There was a time when facial recognition softwares were not recognizing black faces. And they said that simply because uh, these softwares have been fed information to do with palm colors. Even when training these algorithms, even when training technology that everybody is going to use, black people are not considered. How open do your eyes have to be in order for you to see this? Even if you think that our to the cis doesn't exist even if you think that you're not entitled because you've worked so hard all your life but just look around you 
if you're a palm color person. People, I don't want to be that guy. I love my life. I love being black. It's a privilege in a way. I was watching another video about a sister in Sweden and she says that it's fun to get on a train if you're a black person because no palm color person wants to sit next to you or in the same uh, cube thing with you. I don't know what that thing is called, but it can be a privilege in a way, especially when palm coloreds are not bothering you. Some avoided the sister to the point that they preferred standing, even though there was enough space for even three people to fit. But to be honest with you, if a lot of black people were really just palm coloreds, we would have multi-millionaires. We would have black people that are dominating the earth. If only, if only the color of our skins could change for a social experiment or something, then you would see that what I'm saying is true. But hey, I'm not wishing or anything. This is just a hypothetical. Now, with that being said, leave your thoughts in the comments and tell me what you think about today's discussion. I will see you in the next video and hey, we're allowed to dream, aren't we? Signing off for now. Like, share and subscribe. Take care.